time is really of the essence in sales and in marketing. Move at the wrong speed is to open up the possibility that it's easier for your buyer to deal with your competitor than with you. Force the speed in the wrong way and you'll absolutely make that conversation between your competitor and your buyer a certainty. Today I want to talk with you about lag, delay, the effect of lag and the effect of trying to change how long it takes a buyer to move between stages. I'm going to give you a couple of examples and they're kind of counter examples. The first one is the effect of delay. Drawn from a, a real story, we worked with a company and we measured the time that it took them to win a deal and we found that it took 51 days to win a deal. That same company, we measured their funnel, how long it took to lose a deal and it took on average 151 days three times longer. The lesson from that is that a buyer who's really taking longer to move between one stage and the next in their journey is probably never going to move forward. They've either moved forward with your competitor and not yet shared it with you or perhaps they're just never going to go ahead with that project. It's not compelling enough. Or maybe your salespeople are kidding themselves. Maybe the prospect is just telling them all the right things but the salesperson doesn't want to give in. And whilst that's a great trait, it's really hard to build a business around it. Imagine in that 51 day journey, if it took on average 10 days to move between each of five stages. So, you know, slice your funnel up into 10 stages, excuse me, five stages and give them 10 days each. Now, if a buyer has been sitting in any one of those stages for 30 days, and a normal buyer who does buy takes 10, what do you think the chances are they're ever going to move ahead? I'm thinking not much. Lag is death. Now here's the other story. Likewise we're measuring funnel top to bottom but I only want to talk about the very middle of the funnel. And in this example, this, this uh, case study, it took 16 days for a buyer to navigate the middle of the funnel. Not the top, not the bottom, just the middle of the funnel. So that might be the need definition stage, maybe even including the opportunity creation stage. So need definition and solutioning if you like. And that middle stage took 16 days on average for a successful buyer. So how long do you think it would take for a buyer who didn't move forward? Well, based on my other example, you might think, you know, 45, 50 days, in other words, three times longer. The answer is four. When they took four days to navigate that middle band, they lost. When they took 16, they won. Why? Because the seller was rushing the buyer. The seller was failing to say to the buyer, with respect, I hear what you're saying, but let's just explore that a little bit to make sure I understand it and to see if there's some value that I can add to the need definition stage as well. When they slowed down, they won. When they sped up, they lost. Let's just explore what the benefits would be if we could help buyers move more quickly through the funnel. The answer is nothing. If you can help buyers move through the funnel faster, that's not moving through the funnel more certainly. All that's going to happen if they can move faster is that you can buy your lists or acquire your inbound leads a little later. That's all that's going to change. So if there's no benefit to moving them faster and you've found that if you try to rush, you're going to lose, then why would you? There is an exception to that. So as a general rule, I'm going to say don't try to speed up the buying cycle. It takes as long as it takes. There's one exception. We call these lag busters. And there are sometimes there's either a tactic or a strategic shift that you can make that genuinely allows the buyer to move faster. And here's one quick example. So imagine that you're a brand new vendor with a brand new piece of technology in an established market. Well, for your buyers, that's a double dare. 
You're asking them to buy you and your new idea, your new technology, without the proof yet. They're going to take time. So if you genuinely know that your product is going to work and they don't, it takes them time to reach your level of knowledge. How about removing that? Removing that requirement for them to acquire your level of knowledge and say, Mr. Customer, I know that right now we're a little unproven to you, but I know it works and I've done it often enough. So here's the deal. I'm going to take all the commercial risk. Instead of paying me to buy the technology, I'm going to give it to you on a month-by-month -month basis with no contract. Now, I know in some businesses you simply can't do that. It's kind of hard in professional services to take that kind of risk. This is a product story for now. But basically, if you can de-risk the deal, you are going to speed it up naturally, not by rushing the buyer, but by giving them a lesser decision to make. Other than that, the basic rule is you just can't make the funnel go any faster. Well, in a moment or two, I'll show you how we do that in the funnel plan. But first, I'm going to do two things. I'm going to share with you the conclusions from today, and I'm going to invite you to receive more of these blogs. But let's get to that conclusion first. To a significant extent, the conclusion is just to acknowledge the reality of how long it takes a buyer to move. That's it. How do you know that, though? Well, for a start, you should be measuring every one opportunity and every lost opportunity, and you should be contrasting it campaign by campaign, geography by geography, sales group by sales group, or sales person by sales person, if you're at that level of granularity, and work out which, how long a deal naturally takes to move through the funnel. Identify whether you're actually impacting that. Remember my lagbuster story where I was explaining that the, the vendor in that story was actually causing or forcing the prospect to slow right down because they, were, they had this kind of two-part risk. So work out whether you're actually the reason why it's changed. Other than that, just acknowledge how long it takes by measuring that from your CRM. Once you've measured the CRM, then project forward. To get this many deals in Q4, how many deals need to be at proposal stage or earlier in Q3, and so on, back through the funnel. Finally, you need to choose tactics good enough to help buyers move confidently through their journey at that rate. Well, if you enjoyed this blog, then likely you'd enjoy our other blogs. They're all about how to help buyers move through your funnel. So uh, if you haven't already, I'm going to invite you to go to mathmarketing.com forward slash blog and to subscribe either to the twice a week uh, blog or to the once a month insights from uh, Funnel Vision Monthly. Now, if you have already done that but you've got colleagues who haven't, can I encourage you or even ask you to invite them to go to mathmarketing.com forward slash blog and to subscribe. So I promised I was going to show you how we do this in Funnel Plan. So firstly, lag doesn't... Um, present itself on the funnel plan directly, it has a consequence on the velocity model. Let's zoom into the velocity model and take a look at that. Basically, the velocity model describes how many closed deals do you need to meet your revenue targets and therefore how many proposals, how many best and finals in between proposals, how many need definitions, how many troubled buyers, how many interested buyers and how many names. All the way through. Lag has a big impact on that. Now that's where the consequence of our work is going to present. Let's now take a look in Funnel Plan how we adjust that. We can do it at two levels of granularity. You can stick with very high level pictures like how long does it take to go from hello to thank you, from, from qualified lead through to closed deal. That's what we were talking about earlier. Work out how long that takes and you can simply work with that number. Or we can dive down here into the more detailed section of the velocity model and we can break it out week, um, stage by stage in the journey. Now, frankly, what most people do is they start with the big, the big number and then they apportion the more granular number to make sure that they've reflected it roughly accurately. Now, I want to quickly evidence my point before about the fact that if you try to make the buyer go, go faster, nothing happens. Let's take a look here. I've got a couple numbers for you. Firstly, if you um, 
have a, and you can see here that we've got a, got a 13 week journey. If you change that, let's say, to a 10 week journey, I want to show you two velocity numbers. So firstly, let's now generate the velocity um, to identify how many buyers we need to have um, at the very top of the funnel to get our sales. And you can see that we're going to have 4,604 prospects in order to get just short of 150 sales. Now, if we shorten that cycle, let's bring it down to 10 weeks. Let's lose three weeks from the total. Take a look. The number's now 4569. Really? That's all that's going to happen is that by reducing your sales cycle, or at least trying to reduce your sales cycle by three weeks out of 13, you're going to have, what's that, 30, 35 fewer buyers. That's less than 1%. Given the pitfalls that I spoke about earlier and the almost negligible impact on accelerating successfully, why would you bother? Just work out how long it actually takes, help your buyers go through the funnel at that stage. Now leakage is a different story altogether. Your failure rate stage by stage is something you want to sweat. I'll show you how to do that in another blog. But for now, may your funnel be full and always flowing. <laughs> <laughs>